Uh, hello and welcome to this lesson on distance time graphs. Uh, a few things to get through today. Uh, let's get our brains thinking. Uh, does anybody know what the world land speed record is? Well, if you don't, you're going to find out pretty shortly. A collection of uh, things there, um, everyday kind of things that are in motion. Well, most of them, obviously, stationary there is uh, nothing to do with pens and pencils, of course, uh, to do with not moving. Uh, can you uh, put them into uh, whether or not they're going faster or slower than the previous one. Give you a few moments to think about that. You can pause the video, of course. Obviously, uh, does anybody have any idea what the average um, speed of each one is in meters per second? It's important, of course, to remember that meters per second is the unit speed that we use in physics. We are definitely not usually concerned with things like miles per hour. Give you a clue on those things above the slug is definitely not the fastest. Uh, if anybody's clever enough to rank them from fastest to slowest, well, too long to do that one i'll leave you to think about uh there we go the um land speed record well that's phenomenal isn't it when you think about it 1227 kilometers per hour uh as i said previously though really kilometers per hour and certainly not the miles per hour it ain't much use to us so let's convert that very quickly into meters per second well it's easily done um of course um 1228 times a thousand which will take you from your kilometers to um to your meters that gives us one million two hundred and twenty eight thousand okay and then of course if we take that one million two hundred and twenty eight thousand uh meters per hour divided by three thousand six hundred which of course is the number of seconds in one hour we get that phenomenal 341 meters per second that's why of course there is telling us that it's max 1.02 uh, of course mach 1 being the speed of sound again as you should hopefully know that is about 340 meters per second phenomenal record great achievement and again of course if you can see there it's the royal air force something to be proud of there are even uh, nuns out there apparently that are desperate to get their uh, claws on that land speed record Hopefully she doesn't make a habit, though, of riding around too much without helmet on. Very dangerous stat. You want to be careful, dear. Uh, this slide shows you the um, speed in meters per second of a variety of um, objects that are in motion. Uh, you should, at this stage of the game, really have a you know, clear feel for the, the average speeds that things move at. And certainly you should have an understanding that things like airliners um, are moving at a much faster speed than things like, uh, I don't know, uh, for example, across Channel Ferry. Um, the average walking speed there which is for a human about 1.4 meters per second that is something that they do expect you to be able to recall uh speed of light of course a ridiculously fast 300 million meters per second could go around the um equator of the earth eight times in the mere second if of course you can get light in a circle which you can't uh speed of sound a mere 330 meters per second by comparison so 340 on the last slide but it's there or thereabouts. Uh, extension question there for you, if anybody can explain why uh, in the Antarctic, the speed of sound would be a little bit slower than that. That's a good one for you to get your head around, have a think about. Uh, one more thing, let's celebrate one of nature's wonders there. Peregrine falcon, uh, one of the fact, well, it's the fastest bird in the world, maximum of 108 meters per second while it is diving for its prey. Clearly you can see there, the streamlined nature of its body as it's going into that dive position. Uh, get out of the way, little birdies. Uh, objectives of today's lesson, just have a, a think about what it is that we're going through. Uh, certainly the first one we've kind of had a good think about there. As I said, it's expected really that you can recall speeds that are encountered. Certainly it's very useful when you're answering questions. When you get an answer there, you should have a feel for whether it's uh, appropriate for the object uh, with the speed of which you're trying to calculate. Uh, again, the equation which we'll get onto in a little while, speed distance or speed equals distance divided by time. Come on, you did that in year seven. Uh, it's no problems, I'm sure, for you. Uh, and again, distance time graphs. I know we've done these uh, earlier in year nine, uh, but again, using distance time graphs, use them to calculate the speed of an object. Again, it'll be good for you to recap that one. So that's what we're going to get onto uh, for the rest of this lesson. Uh, as we've already discussed, again, in physics, the unit that we use for uh, speed uh, is meters per second. And again, in terms of describing um, in terms of the units involved, it should be pretty clear, really. The faster you're going, you cover more meters in less seconds. It really is that straightforward. You go a greater distance in a short space of time. Conversely, if you're going slowly, it takes you longer to cover the same amount of distance. Uh, converting the words into the formula, 
uh, a key stage small. We do need to know that the, uh, the of course, the formula triangle uh, to be able to manipulate that. Um, distance, which would have been D to you in year seven, is X. Uh, distance, again, X is something that you do need to know. We'll mention that again on the next slide. It's important that you remember that. It's how you'll come across it going forward. Uh, I can't resist, uh, before I finish on this slide, uh, of course, just drawing a quick moustache on, on Jeremy Clarkson's face, if you can keep his head still while he's there moving about. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, look at that. Perfect. Okay. So here we go. It's equation time. You've come across this one before. Average speed equals distance divided by the time taken. This stage of the game, key stage four, you've got to be able to recall the formula and the units for that one. Be able to put them into a formula triangle and to be able to manipulate, uh, make the subjects any one of those three things um, from that formula triangle. So there we go. Formula triangle time. You said you've seen this one before. Um, slight changes, as mentioned. Distance is now X. Uh, and again, you're going to come across distance uh, as X in other formula triangles. So get used to that is X over S times T. Um, so again, we can manipulate the triangle in different ways. So distance uh, is speed times the time. Uh, about speed, speed, of course, being distance divided by the time. A couple of things to have a go at, two questions. Uh, I'll give you a few minutes to uh, have a think about those. Of course, you can quickly pause the video. Answers coming up in three to one of course we've already kind of had that one well we knew from previous uh what the speed in one second was um for it so we just have to multiply that out 341 times five to give uh, 1705 meters in five seconds uh, and again we can work that one out to calculate the speed again we did the distance 3000 meters divided by and again here be careful two minutes is of course uh, 120 seconds so 3000 divided by 120 will give us our 25 meters per second. Right, practice makes perfect time. Use your formula triangle. You should have jotted that down from the previous slide. You've got several distances, times and speeds there. Uh, and you just got to work out the gap. Again, I will put the answers up here in that three, two and one. And here we go. Right, there we go. Hopefully not too many problems there for you. OK, on to that third objective, calculating the speed from the gradient on a graph. You're more likely to see uh, questions on an exam paper structured around a distance time graph. So it's important that you can understand them uh, and get your head around them. So the gradient of the line on a distance time graph equals a speed. Gradient uh, in geography, steep to the hill, the steeper the line, the greater the speed of the object. You have come across this one before. Again, it's something that you should be able to clearly understand at this stage. In reality, you don't move around in jerky movements. It's not like you're walking at 1.5 meters per second, and then all of a sudden you're walking at three meters per second. Uh, there is a gradual increase. So if we just have a quick look on this graph here that we've got, again, at this moment here, there has been an increase in speed um, over a certain amount of time. And again, at this moment here, that speed has stopped and the object that was in motion has come to a stop. It's no longer covering a given distance. As I said, it would make things complicated. So sometimes we do like to make it easy in physics for you. Uh, we do these line graphs and they are straight line graphs so that we can more clearly calculate the speed of an object at a given point on that graph. So here we go, calculating the speed of an object from a distance time graph. What's the speed of the object between points A and B? So as we can see from the graph, uh, at point A, the object had already covered a distance of 10 meters from its starting point. By the time it got to point B, that object was at 70 meters from its starting point. In terms of the time it took to cover that distance, well, at point A, the object had already taken three seconds of time to do that distance. By point B, it had taken six seconds from its starting point at time zero. So we've got all we need there to work out our speed of the object. We've got speed obviously equals distance divided by time. So we've got a distance of 60 meters divided by three seconds worth of time from three to six seconds. And of course, 60 divided by three equals 20 meters per second. 
Right, here we go. Uh, this one would work better in a classroom, I'm afraid, because I probably have printed it off so you could work it out. It'd be probably difficult, especially if you're watching this on a mobile phone. But give it a go anyway. Calculate the speed for the for the, uh, for the times on that graph from A to B, from B to C, from C to D, and from D to E. I'll give you a little while to think about it. Here's the countdown. Three, two, one. Here we go. So obviously from A to B, uh, it's covered. 300 meters uh, and it took 300 seconds to do that so its speed was one meter per second for b to c we've got a 400 meter distance covered it took 200 seconds to do that so again two meters per second for c uh, b to c c to d again 300 divided by 300 you should hopefully be able to see from the gradient from a to b and the gradient from c to d even by eye they look very similar so it hopefully shouldn't be too much of a surprise that they're the same answer uh, as shouldn't this one be clearly the steepness of the gradient from d to e clearly indicates a much faster speed so four meters per second there 400 divided by 100 um, for d to e Okay, here's one for you. What happens to the direction of the line on the graph when the red arrow changes direction? The red arrow, of course, is the object that is in motion. So you'll notice that when the arrow moves up, the line is going up. When the arrow moves down, the line is going down. It's important that you're clear that obviously it's still in motion in both directions uh, and that the line going down does not represent a decrease in the speed of the object. And again, if we'll notice here, the distance on that graph is x, uh, x being the unit that you need to get used to. Okay, here we go. Give this one a go. We've got six objects, A to F. And again, all of those objects have covered a certain amount of distance over a given amount of time. You've got statements underneath. Your job is to match those statements to the motion. Right, so we've got object A slowing down, object B a fast, steady speed. Object C is getting faster. Actually, it's accelerating. Uh, object D is moving at a steady speed. Again, you can clearly see that it's a less uh, or a lower speed than object D. The gradient is less. That object uh, by E has got stationary. It's not actually gone any further for that amount of time. Be really clear on that. A flat line on a distance time graph means that the object is stationary at point F. It's returning to zero point. And again, notice by the gradient, it's the same as for that point there. It's just changed the direction to go back to where it started from. Okay, give this one a go then. Uh, calculate the speed for each section A, B, and C. Here's the countdown three, two, one. So for A, we've got a distance of 10 meters that's been covered uh, in five seconds. So 10 divided by five is two. Uh, for B, again, it's a flat line on a distance time graph. So therefore, there's no distance covered. So for the, the time between five and 10 seconds, it's not going anywhere. So the speed is zero. But for C, again, it's minus one meters per second. It's direction has actually changed. So therefore, we've got 10 meters covered in terms of the distance. 10 seconds that it took to do that distance, uh, and therefore it's a minus one meters per second. Uh, in terms of the extension there, how would the acceleration be different on this graph? We're going to look at that in a bit more detail in another one of these. Okay, here's one more thing to have a go at. We've got eight questions there. It's your job to answer them. Uh, here's a countdown three, two, one. Who travels the fastest over the journey? Well, that's clearly Ivan, it's the steepest gradient. Question in the graph really only takes him eight seconds to 100 meters. That makes him a gold medal winner as far as I'm concerned. Who travels the shortest distance? It was Shirley. It looks like she's given up 60 meters. Come on, Shirley, you can do it. Right, who travels the slowest for the first 10 seconds? Well, that's Joy. As you can see, the gradient there for Joy is the lowest over that initial 10 seconds. She must have traveled the slowest. Who travels for the shortest time? Well, again, it's got to be Ivan. He was really quick. You look about eight seconds, he's finished. He's done even before Shirley's even stopped. Go on, what a guy. Anyway, what's Chris's speed over the whole journey? 10 meters per second. He's done 100 meters. He's done it in 10 seconds. I mean, come on, even that's pretty respectable, really. And did Shirley stop moving? Well, she stopped moving after 10 seconds, after she covered that 60 meters of a distance. What is her fastest speed? Well, six meters per second, 60 meters covered. 
10 seconds taken it's not bad though that's surely come on we're faster than average walking speed don't forget that's 1.45 meters per second it was an average speed of five meters per second well again that's joy 100 meters covered and again it took her 20 seconds to do that 100 divided by 20 equals five again pretty respectable that joy go on love you did pretty well right that's the uh, first time i've ever done this hopefully it was quite straightforward I make improvements next time. This is for signing off. Thank you for listening, everybody. If you got this far, I appreciate it. Thank you very much.